I am in Underwood, Indiana at the Pigeon Roost Massacre State Memorial. Uh, this was the site of a pre-1812 white settlement that became victim to a Shawnee War Party at the offset of the War of 1812 where 24 settlers were killed. This was the site of the first Native American attack in Indiana during the War of 1812. The village of Pigeon Roost was established in 1809 by a group of settlers from Kentucky. Their leader was William E. Collings. So with the passage of the Northwest Territory, many Kentucky settlers like him began squatting in Indiana Territory across the Ohio River, occupying Shawnee lands. The community was right around where this monument is located now. There was a single line of log cabins, and the nearest native village was located 20 miles north. The closest blockhouse was a good ways north, and the second closest one was farther south near what is now Henryville, Indiana. But still, that meant there was no immediate protection by a militia for the people of Pigeon Roost. During the time the village was constructed, conflict was brewing in southern Indiana between the Shawnee and other allied bands of natives, many of whom were being influenced and supplied by the British and the American settlers here in what was then Western Frontier Wilderness. This culminated on September 3rd, 1812 when a war party of the Shawnee, possibly joined by some Delawares and Potawatomis, led a series of coordinated attacks in Indiana. While later that month they would attack Fort Harrison near present-day Terre Haute and siege Fort Wayne, this was their first target. The Shawnee first attacked and killed two hunters that were near here, then they moved on to attack the village at this site. First they attacked Elias Payne's cabin, killing and scalping his wife and seven children. Elias Payne was out with another man named Isaac Kaufman in the woods, but they were found and killed. Well, Elias survived the attack, but with no medical supplies, he bled out. He used to have a grave, but since I-65 runs right by here, it was paved over. Some of the Pigeon Roost settlers did escape to the blockhouse south of here near Henryville, the one owned by Zebulon Collings. Several of his family members died during the raid. One individual who was here at Pigeon Roost was William Collings, and there is a very likely untrue account of him single-handedly killing four natives and holding off the rest with broken or unloaded rifles. It's more likely he just hid and ran to the blockhouse. Another account is that the wife of John Biggs heard the natives approaching their cabin here, so she fled to a thicket with her three children. When the Shawnee approached their cabin, her baby began to whimper, so she stuffed her shawl in its mouth. They did escape, but the baby suffocated. As you can tell by the Iron Gate damage, this location is not particularly kept up and is little known. I don't imagine there are too many visitors. In 1904, the state of Indiana authorized $2,000 to build this memorial. It is a 44 foot tall obelisk made of Bedford, Indiana limestone. That is quite impressive. At the end of the day, 24 settlers were killed here, and their names are listed on this memorial. 15 of them were children, and two other children were also taken. It is believed that four Native Americans died during the attack, the war party bailed before the local militia could even react. Over a hundred militiamen mustered the next day, and they tried to follow the war party with little success. Most of the victims were buried in a mass grave, which I assume is somewhere around the spot. This replica log cabin is a fairly new addition to the memorial. It is similar to those that were built by the settlers here at Pigeon Roost. This used to be a state historic site just like Vincennes or the Lanier Mansion, but since this site is comparatively very small and there are no real facilities or that much to it, it was turned over to the county. The leader of the attack was believed to be Mistlemetow, a close confidant to Tecumseh. There is a story, again much of this information is not known for sure because these accounts were made decades later, that Mistlemetow was captured in 1813 and under the threat of death, confessed that he led the Pigeon Roost raid. The settlement was named Pigeon Roost because of the overwhelming amount of passenger pigeons that were all over the place. Back then they were considered a nuisance, but in just over a century, passenger pigeons were completely hunted down to extinction. Now I'm going to be driving through the snow to the little Ohio River town of Vivi, Indiana passing by some interesting sights along the way.
I'm gonna get a takeout from one of my favorite restaurants in the world, Roxano's. All right, mission accomplished. So we got a pizza and some scrumptious Roxano's breadsticks. There's a barge going down the Ohio River. I'm here at this old country cemetery in Switzerland County, Indiana. It's called the Zion Chapel Cemetery. I've been here many times before. I uh, filmed a video on it last year, but I noticed since the last time I was here, uh, the roof of the church has caved in a lot more. I don't remember this tree being here. I'm wondering if this had something to do with the collapse. You can see that whole part of the roof is entirely bare at this point. This church was built in the late 19th century. It has fallen into ruins. It's been very much abandoned during my lifetime. And I've only seen it get progressively worse. All right, we'll head inside, or actually, we'll probably not go inside. But uh, I think this roof was relatively new. Don't know when it was put in, but it has now entirely collapsed. It's very sad. Now this ceiling has always been interesting because it's like a cast iron pattern ceiling and most of it is still intact. Very rusty but it's still hanging in there. This bed frame has been in here for a while but yeah that whole area has zero ceiling at this point and looks like when it fell in this year it destroyed a lot of the original plank floor that's a mess Makes you wonder how much longer this church is going to be around. It's a fairly sturdy structure, so we could probably stay around for a little while longer, even without its ceiling. I am going back to Roxana's for another pickup order. If you're ever in VB, I'd highly recommend this place. This time I got a quesadilla and more legendary breadsticks. How can breadsticks be so good? Now I'm going to be taking another drive in the region. This intersection is where US Route 50 passes from Indiana into Ohio. The state line is right here. 
now entered Ohio, but we're going back to Indiana. I'm now in Florence, Indiana, and that there is the Markland Dam connecting Florence, Indiana with Ghent, Kentucky. The dam was completed in 1964, so it's fairly old. I think it took like 10 years to build, and uh, it's about 2,000 feet long there. You can take some steps down to the riverbank. There's a little beach here. See all the walks of the river, which will hopefully help prevent massive floods like the one in 1937. I'm about to pass back over the Ohio River into Cincinnati to visit the Christmas Night of Lights at Coney Island Amusement Park. As well as to see some other holiday light displays in the area, check out my videos on those if you're interested. I'm now back in the town of VB, Indiana at night to take a look at their new Christmas lights and window displays. This year they got new funding for Christmas lights downtown, and it looks really good.
It's a beautiful and colorful morning here on the mighty Ohio River. Well, that was the Pigeon Roost Massacre State Memorial and my winter journey around southern Indiana. Please like, subscribe, and share. Also take a look at my other videos on historic sites, roadside attractions, road trips, and much more. Thanks for watching.